Why don't you change, Mr. Mr. President, both you and the Pope speak of peace in Central America. Why are you asking for $270 million for the conference? We're working on it. We're doing the best we can. What would you like the church to do to help for peace in the region? What can the church do? Not the place. Not the How do you like the weather? Where did you go inside? Thank you. 
Give a yell if those guys are in the way. Who yell? No, I mean at me, not at them. Second time this year, I have met in private audience with His Holiness Pope John News on the progress that has been made toward the establishment of a genuine peace in Central America. I assured His Holiness that the United States is committed to the extension of democracy throughout Latin America. The Pope committed to the establishment of an enduring world peace and to the extension or expansion of human freedom around the globe. Indeed, without freedom, there can be no peace. In them, hard work, honesty, thrift, initiative, and daring. Generous aid from the wealthier nations to the poorer is certainly of great importance. But in the long term, it's even more important to share the conditions, the moral causes of prosperity. Mr. President, I'm grateful for the great courtesy that you extend to me by coming personally, express my own deep respect for the constitution, constitutional structure of this democracy, which you are called to preserve, protect, and defend. In addressing you, Mr. President, I willingly pay honor to the United States for what she has accomplished for her own people, for all those whom she has embraced in a cultural creativity and welcomed into an indivisible national unity 
according to her own motto, a pluribus two centers. For all of you, this is a special hour in your history, the celebration of the bicentennial of you. It's a time to recall the original American political faith with its appeal to the sovereignty of God. To celebrate the origin of the United States is to stress. At every turn, he said, your bicentennial speaks to you of moral principles, religious convictions, inalienable rights given by the Creator. And he added, we earnestly hope that this common gift, a great blessing of God. From the beginning of America, freedom was directed to forming a well-ordered society and to promoting its peaceful life. Freedom. This is the freedom that America is called to live and guard and to transmit. She is called to exercise. Be satisfied is the freedom to do what we ought as human beings created by God according to His plan. It is the freedom to live the truth of what we are and what we are as brothers and sisters in a common humanity. That is why Jesus Christ linked truth and freedom together, stating solemnly, you will know the truth and the effort to guard and perfect the gift of freedom must also include the relentless pursuit of truth. In speaking to America, Frederick and Peter recognized this, but he told the Christians never to use their freedom with what I said to the President of the United States in 1979. I would now repeat, attachment to human values and to ethical concerns, which have been a hallmark of the American people, must be situated, especially in the present context, of the growing interdependence of people, present-day relationships, between peoples and between nations demand the establishment of greater international cooperation also in the economic field. The more powerful a nation is, the greater becomes its international responsibility for a more just relationship between all the nations of the world in respect for their dignity and their own personality. Link to service. Freedom is indeed a... the freedom to be American. The freedom to be American. In that constitutional democracy of John Paul II now taking hands with the president. The shutters just exploding around us. And they make their way back towards the mansion. To summarize the uh, papal address and that of President Reagan to begin with, uh, the president sort of outlined what they had talked about inside prior to this uh, media 